بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ایم ڈاکٹر محمد مدثر شہزاد فرام یونیورسٹی آف ایجوکیشن ٹوڈے وی ول ڈسکس اباؤٹ دا فوسلس دیئر کائنڈس اینڈ دیئر آئیڈینٹیفیکیشن دا بیسک سبجیکٹ آف اوور ٹو ڈیز لیکچر از زو جیوگرافی اینڈ پیلنٹولوجی ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس فسٹ آف آل وی ول ڈسکس اباؤٹ the paleontology what is paleontology paleontology is a basically field in which we will study about the fossils and earth crust fossils may be the remains of plants and animals the word paleontology is a greek word having three different words First of all, paleos. Paleos means ancient, onta means existing, and logos means knowledge. The paleontology is divided into different subdivisions. Number one is paleobotany. Paleobotany is basically the study of fossils of plants. Number two is paleontology. Paleontology is basically a study of spores and pollens. The third branch is called as Paleozoology. Paleozoology is distributed in two other fields. Number one is Invertebrate Paleontology, in which we study about the fossils of organisms that are called as in vertebrate are without backbone and the other branch is vertebrate paleontology vertebrate paleontology is basically a field in which we study about the animals having vertebral column or having backbone and the last branch that is called as micro paleontology This is basically a study in which we will discuss about so small animals that can be studied only with the help of microscope. Dear students, now we will move towards our basic topic that is the fossils. <clears throat> the word fossil is basically a Latin language word means to dug up. If we talk about its definition, the fossils can be defined as the remains or relics of any organism that may be a plant or animal or microorganism that was lived prior to recent time. In this definition, the word prior to recent time is emphasizing to whole of the definition in geological time scale the recent period begins about 10 to 15000 years ago it's mean that the fossils can be found having the age of more than 15000 years ago in other words If someone finds the skeleton or remains of an organism that was buried out within last 10 to 15000 years ago it will not be considered in fossils thus this term has been observed for objects indicating the presence of prehistoric organisms and giving some evidences of their size structure shape and habits of these living organisms here we can define again the fossils fossils can be defined as any remains trace or imprints of plants or animals 
that has been preserved by natural process in the earth crust from some distant geological time and provides a record of earth history from that time period and now we are going towards the fossil identification fossils can be identified by a process by which they were formed there are about five different types of fossil identification and their process of formation number one is petrification number two is molds and casts number three is imprints number three uh, number four is preservation of entire organism and number fifth is trace fossil here are the different conditions that are in favor of fossilization in which number one is only a tiny fraction of organisms were lived during the geological past and have been preserved as fossils number two is according to an estimate one only out of each thousand species of prehistoric organism has been fossilized according to this point all organisms cannot be preserved in the form of fossils only one organism from a thousand of species can be preserved in fossilized form it is because of fact that normally the remains of any animal or plant are totally destroyed all the remains of these plants and animals cannot be preserved in fossilized forms there are three special conditions appearing to be necessary for the first point is possession of hard parts any organism plant or animal having the hard parts such as bones tooth shells and chitin are woody tissues of plants can be called as the hard parts these hard parts can be preserved in the form of fossils under exceptionally favorable conditions however even the soft and delicate organisms such as jellyfish worms and insects may be preserved as impressions of carbon residues what is escape from immediate destruction usually after the death of some organisms their soft parts are quickly eaten by scavengers or can be decomposed by some time of bacteria in water or a terrestrial environment but the basic hard parts of these organisms may remain in the form of such impressions remain of these organisms are destroyed by the work of atmosphere and their mechanical forces these atmospheric or mechanical forces may be in the form of rain heat pressure wave action strong winds and pressure and the rapid burial therefore is an important condition for favoring their preservation of hard parts that were not in the third condition that is called as rapid burial in suitable medium 
According to the environment where the organisms were inhibited, the organisms can be formed into fossilized form or cannot be or can be converted into fossils. Here we are going to discuss about these local environments in which number one is marine animals. Marine animals can be preserved in that environment easily by the presence of saltish water. This environment favors the process of fossilization. In these oceans, the organisms that were lived there which secrete shells and many are fishes with bony skeleton. When animals die out, their hard parts will be settled down to the bottom and covered by soft sediments and prevented from oxidation and scavengers. Due to their burial and prevention from oxidation and scavengers, these animals may be converted into rock form and preserved in the fossils. Now we will discuss about the natural mummies. As you already know about the natural mummies, they can be found in any environment. Animals that are living in desert are preserved by desiccation. Desiccation is basically a rapid drying process of body as a result of evaporation in that desert. Next is the umber. Many extinct insects and spiders having soft bodies were encased in umber. Umber is basically a yellowish hardened resin of ancient trees. Next is tarpets. Tarpet is basically a oil seepage. Larger animals that have been trapped in a tarpet and soil seepage can be formed that can be converted into the fossils form. One of the most famous localities in this type is at Rincola Bria in Los Angeles, USA. Here you can see the picture of that area in which you can easily see the oil formation in that local environment. Next is volcanic ash. Volcanic ash can also be served as protective medium for fossilization of local in animals that are present in that area where the volcanic eruptions take place. Next one is ice. Ice is also a protective medium that produce the most remarkable preservation in ice. In ice, there is low number of microbes that can decompose that animals into mineralized form. Now we are going towards the kinds of fossils. Fossils may be arranged into four different groups on the methods of preservation. Number one is original soft parts of organisms. Number two is original hard parts of organism. Number three is altered hard parts of organism. And number four is traces of organisms. Now we will discuss 
each of the type one by one. Number one that I'm going to discuss is original soft parts of organism. Usually it is thought that only hard parts of organism can be fossilized. But under some exceptionally favorable conditions, soft parts of organisms can be preserved. These exceptionally favorable conditions may be in form of ice or in form of oil saturated soil or in form of umber. Here you can see the best known examples of fossils preserved in frozen soil or in ice that are the mammals and could be called as woolly mammoth of Siberia and Alaska. The woolly mammoth were preserved in their full form. Their skin, flesh, hairs and their blood. Here you can see the diagram of preserved woolly mammoth and here you can see in their live form. The remains of an extinct rhinoceros have been obtained from oil saturated soil in eastern Poland in which the skin of that organism was preserved. Here in this diagram you can see easily the structures of that preserved animal and here are the fossils of that organism that were preserved. Students, now we are going towards another basic structure or basic compound that can preserve the organisms that is called as umber. Umber basically a sticky gum that can be formed by historical plants. Here in these different diagrams you can observe easily the different soft bodied organisms that are preserved in the form of fossils. Now we are going towards the carbonization and distillation. All the soft organic materials can be preserved by carbonization. That is a basic process in which as time passes, nitrogen, oxygen and hydrogen, all the gases are lost from an organism and only a thin film of carboniferous material may remain. Here in this diagram you can easily observe the different carbonized fossils. These are maybe in form of imprints of that living organism that were present in some time. Now we are going towards the original hard parts of organism. Most animal and plants having hard parts in their bodies which are capable of fossilization. There are the following different forms of original hard parts of organism in their fossilized form. Number one is calcite remain. The shells of foraminifera, corals and tests of echinoderms and branchiopods are basically preserved as calcite remain in the ancient time. Here in these two diagrams you can easily observe these remains in the form of calcite. The second one is aragonitic remains. The shells of gastropods, pelicipods and cephalopods that are unstable form of calcite can be remains as in form of regonetic remains. Next one is phosphatic remains. 
Phosphatidyl remains may be in the form of bones of vertebrates having a large form of phosphorus in the bones. Next one is silicious remains. The shells of radiolarians and the skeleton of some sponges are maybe in form of silicious remains having large quantity of silicious material. And here is the last form that is called as chitinous remain. As you already know that the exoskeleton of arthropods containing a large amount of chitin in their body. So that chitin can be formed or can be converted into the form of fossils. Here is a third type that is called as altered hard parts of organisms. In this type, we can easily observe that original hard structures of many organisms may undergo considerable variations with the passage of time and maybe change their shape into an altered part. These changes may come out in many different ways depending on the body material of organism, environmental conditions in which organisms lived, the third is conditions under which the remains of organisms deposited. Here is the first form of altered hard parts that is the petrification. Some organisms or some parts of living organisms may be turned into stones that can called as petrified fossils. Their internal cavities or pores may be filled with precipitated mineral matter. Here you can see the different examples of petrified wood that is basic common example of petrification as in the form of fossils number two is mineralization in some living organisms having different chemicals in their bones or in shells or in their leaves may dissolve in water and form a chemical compound in solution form. These chemical compounds in solution form may be deposited in the form of minerals. In these replacing minerals, there are some examples. Number one is silica, number two is lime quartz are in the form of pyrites here in this diagram you can observe the mineralized form of some organisms in the form of minerals on that local environment now we are going towards the traces of organism the traces of organism are also indirect evidences of fossils the examples of these traces are mold, cast, traces, trails, gastrolith, or caprolites. We are going to firstly towards the mold. Mold is basically impression of an organism in surrounding material. For example, when a shell or bone or other structure is buried in local environment or in sediments and then dissolved by groundwater, leaving a cavity that is a mold. This can be a easy example. This is a mold. You have a sancha. You have a mold. You have a mold. 
तो सांचा क्या करेगा उसको एक स्ट्रक्चर में कन्वर्ट कर देता है जिसको हम मोल्ड का नाम दे सकते हैं इज द सेकेंड फॉर्म दैट इज कॉल्ड एज कास्ट इट इज हॉलो कैविटी और मोल्ड इज सबसिक्वेंटली फिल्ड विद सम मिनरल मैटर दैट कैन बी कॉल्ड एज नेचुरल कास्ट हेयर इन दिस डायग्राम यू कैन इजिली ऑब्जर्व द मोल्ड एंड कास्ट नेक्स्ट वन इज traces and trails organisms that move on their foot may be leave their footprints these footprints are also traces or tracks of that local animals in usa there were found many footprints of dinosaurs that are the excellent examples or excellent shapes of dinosaurs in the form of their foot if we talk about the trails trails are basically impressions made by the bodies of organism as they crawl over the surface here in this diagram you can easily observe the footprints of organisms here is the footprint of dinosaur if we talk about the gastrolith gastroliths are basically smooth rounded stones that were found in rib cages of dinosaurs these stones were probably helped in their digestion here you can see these different gastroliths that were recovered from the intestines of these dinosaurs that were extinct from our local environment and it was found that these gastroliths were very helpful process next is the coprolite <coughs> sorry coprolite are basically fossil fecal pellets or castings of animals are droppings and can be called as coprolite these feces or castings of animals may preserved in some forms and if they were found in environment after a lot of years they can easily tell us about the feeding habits and the digestion process of that organism now we are going towards the uses of fossils as you already know that fossils are very useful and important for our today's research of paleontology and evolution these fossils are useful in number of ways the scientists use fossils to recreate the geological history of earth fossils are also very helpful in tracing of development of plants and animals in which we can easily tell us our generation about the evolution fossils can also be used as stratigraphic indicators fossils can provide us about important clues to the age of rocks containing them because it has long been known that 
there is a definite relationship between fossil contents of rocks and position of these rocks in geological column. Here in this diagram, you can easily observe that these are the oldest fossils. The fossils that are near to the surface may be called as recent fossils, but the fossils that are away from the surface that can be called as an oldest fossils. Here number one, you can easily observe that there is a number one. These fossils are the oldest fossils. And number two, in which you can see this type of fossils with one that are in recent as compared to number one. And on the other hand, you can easily observe three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. These different type of fossils are telling us about their age or about their evolution in the world. <coughs> fossils are also helpful as climatic indicator. Fossils are used to demonstrate the existence of different climatic conditions in different geological time periods. For example, if we talk about the fossil fern from Greenland, it indicates that there were a much warmer climates in that time period in Greenland. Remains of reef building corals have been found in Siberia. Since these animals have always lived in warmer seas. But their presence in Siberian region may indicate that the region of Siberia was very hot in the past time period and indicating the presence of these corals. Their fossils indicate that the climate was tropical at least during Siberian, uh, during Silurian period. Fossils of reindeer from France indicate that once there was an extremely climate, extremely cold climate in France in past time periods. Fossils are well also very helpful in the evidences of changing geographical pattern. Fossils have provided us much information about the distribution of seas and land masses of the past. Certain animals such as corals, echinoderms, and brachiopods always lived in the sea. Their presence in local dry environment are in locally available fresh water will indicate that there may be a sea in their past time. Presence of these animals indicate marine depositions for rocks containing. Fossils are also helpful as a record of prehistoric life. By studying the record of the changes that organisms have undergone, the paleontologist is able to work out the family tree or evolutionary pattern of most of present day life. It is possible to determine the relationship between different groups of plants and animals to see how slowly and progressively life become more complex. As we have already discussed in above slide, 
where different uh, different organisms were evolved in different time periods you can easily observe in that diagram that the organisms were developed slowly from one into another complex shape fossils are also an evidence of organic evolution as you have already studied the subject of evolution in which you observe about the different fossils that provide one of the strongest evidence to support the theory of organic evolution this theory states that the more advanced forms of today have evolved from simpler and most primitive forms of past according to that theory it is suggested by many researchers that the life is basically start sorry the life was basically start from a micro organism that were called as prokaryote from that prokaryote after some time eukaryotes were evolved the transformation have been gradual and at very slow rate and has been brought about by such factors as heredity changes in local environment natural selection and adaptability of these species to that local environment where they were lived fossils are also important tool for economy since many of our more important resources are associated with sedimentary rocks fossils may be of help in locating mineral ores coal oil and gas deposits foraminifera are important in locating oil fields the presence of these foraminifera is the basic clue where we can easily locate the different oil fields these oil gas mineral and coal can be obtained and sell to our country for for the economic of that uh, for economy of that country here is the index fossils index fossils are the fossils of organisms that lived during only one short period of time and were extinct after that time period scientists assumed that index fossils of same type of organism are all nearly the same age so the layer of rock with one type of index fossil in it is close age close in age to an other layer of rock with same type of index fossils in it that was all about of today's lecture you can send me your questions आप मुझे अपने जो सवाल हैं वो भेज सकते हैं अगर किसी बच्चे को कोई भी किसी किस्म की कोई डिफिकल्टी है वो अपने क्वेश्चंस जो हैं वो सेंड करके उनका आंसर्स ले सकते हैं